And now, here is Larry Haynes as Mickey Spillane, that hammer guy. <laughs> get it. You can't understand it at all. You walk into Pat Chambers' office at Homicide, and the sight you see brings you up short with your jaw bouncing off the floor in amazement. For the love of feet, close your mouth. What's the stare at? What's the stare at? You've read that Captain Pat Chambers was reassigned for special temporary duty with the Crime Commission, but you didn't know it had come to this. Guy feels like dressing up once in a while, Mike. What's so wrong about it? Oh, so that's what it is. I knew there was something strange about it. Hey, this tux fits all right, doesn't it? Uh, my mistake. I'm sorry. Mistake about what? The disguise, Mr. Holmes. For a moment, I thought you were the head waiter at the Bowery Coffee Joint. Very funny. Any other comment? Yeah, yeah. The sign on your door says homicide. So? Though you ought to book that shirt you wear, and the collar looks like it's killing you. Hey, it is a little tight at that. Yeah, what's the deal, Pat? Is that formal straight jacket your uniform for the new job? I got the ribbon, will you, Mike? <laughs> I'm going to help the commission break up Barney Miller's syndicate if I have to wear this monkey suit to his funeral. I'll buy you a drink on that. Not tonight. I got a date with someone who's very interested in my future. And her. Hey, hey, cut that. You really sound serious. Serious enough to start making plans. Pack your kitty. Am I? Listen, Mike, you know Sergeant Ryan out there at the desk? You see the way he looks? How can I miss him? He's as well fed as a prize turkey the week before Christmas. Well, he's got a wife who can cook and four kids and a nice little house in the suburbs. Now, look, Pat, that's all right for guys like Sergeant Ryan. What's wrong with a deal like that for guys like me? Same thing as with me. We know James too well, Pat. We know how the odds are rigged. Some of them are different. Look, I know you don't want to bet on that. I'll bet on Marie. I don't make sure bets with friends. You know all the answers. When it comes to games, yeah. You know, for the first time, I'm feeling sorry for you. All right, to hold me a benefit. Tell you what I will do. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting Marie at 10. You join us. I want you to see how right I am. No, thanks. But when you find out, old friend, how right I am, give me a buzz. And we'll have a good laugh over this. <laughs> looking at you like that annoying kid in your grade school class who had all the answers. But you know Pat is only temporarily derailed. You know he's too smart for any game. So you have yourself an evening. Get home around 2.30 a.m. and just as you unlock the door, your phone is ringing. I understand you're a friend of Captain Chambers, Hammer. So? Well, your boy's in a little trouble. Something that'll fix him good. That is, unless you're interested enough to do something about it. What is this, a gag? You think it's funny? Where do you hit a tagline? It'll kill you. Who is this? My name is Hank Busby. I'm at 943 East 20th Street, apartment 4E. Come on over while there's still time to laugh. <laughs> Busby doesn't sound funny, so you shove your hat back on and drive downtown to that address. You jab the door buzzer for over a minute, and finally the door swings back. What do you want? The tall, sleepy-eyed dame is busy tucking herself into a pink cloud of a robe that's as soft and loose as a rippling yellow hair. You know, it's almost three in the morning. I'm Mike Hammer. So take your name and bring it back where it belongs. Three in the morning. I'm not so fast with the door, sister. I got a call to come here. Well, if you did, this is the wrong apartment. Well, you're Mrs. Busby, aren't you? Hmm? Mrs. Hank Busby? Mrs. Henry Busby. Or Carol Busby. Why? Your husband told you. My husband? Now, look, I'm too tired to play games. I spoke to your husband 15 minutes ago, and he told oh, me... Oh, no. You couldn't have talked to Henry. He's dead. What? My husband died over a year ago. <laughs> the door in your face. You stand there looking at it blankly till the shock of embarrassment wears off. You feel like an April Fool prankster suddenly told it's the middle of summer. You go back to your place, flop in the bed, and switch off the light. But this isn't the night you're going to get any sleep. guy leaning against your door looks like he's on his last leg. His eyes are black glazed pools surrounded by a face the color of a flower bag. Please. Please, let me in. Who are you? I, I talked to you on the phone. Hey, Busby. What? Please. Please, let me in. Not before I find out whether this is another gag. No gag. This is no gag. But before your hands touch him, he crumples like an unstarched chick. You look him over. No marks of violence. No sign of a gun or a knife wound. And he doesn't have the color of a guy who's been given a lethal mission. You can't put any of it together. 
Especially that part he told you over the phone about Pat Chambers being in the jam. You go through his pocket. Nothing but a photo negative in a clean envelope. As you walk over to the table lamp to examine it, you forget the door is still open. But you're reminded of it suddenly when... Please stay right where you are, Mr. Hammer. The voice isn't sleepy anymore. It's as steady as the hand that holds the gun pointed at me. He's dead. Oh, well, he couldn't be. You said your husband died over a year ago. He is dead, isn't he? Now, you should know. I didn't kill him. Maybe you frightened him. That's death. impossible. Do I look like the kind of person who frightens men? Oh, I'm scared to death of you. You make me shake all over like a kid in a Model A with his first date. Well, turn your motor off, Mike. You're not going any place with me. Look, what do you want? You should know the answer to that one. Now, you overrate me. I'm a lousy contestant for a quiz show. I'll give you a hint. Now, would that be cricket? The negative. Negative? Look, why don't we talk about something positive, like uh, what this is all about? I'm not here to answer questions. This gun should convince you of that. The negative, please. Now, would you really use that gun? Don't try me. I saw you slip the negative into your pocket. Oh. Why can't your eyes be just beautiful instead of sharp, too? Turn around. I get the negative myself. Yeah, but you be careful, huh? I'm ticklish. Turn around. And no tricks. All right. I'm leaving now. What? Not even a kiss goodbye? A kiss. All right, Mike. If you really insist. In just a moment, we'll return to That Hammer Guy. Now, this is no gag, Pat. Get over here right away. Okay, I'm on my way. And believe me, Mike, it better not be a gag. Pat comes right over, and with him, the medical examiner. The Emmy gives Pat his report while you boil some coffee on the two burners. After the Emmy leaves, Pat joins you in a cup. Ugh, you still make the lousiest coffee in town. Well, I just could never make the grade in home economics. That's why I was drunk out of Vassa. Uh, it was no gag. I never joked about murder, Pat. It wasn't murder. What? The Emmy said it was heart failure. What would you say he told you his name was? Hey, Busby White. Like your name is Busby. He was Charlie Fergus. How do you know? How do I know? He's on my list for the Crime Commission investigation. You mean he's tied up with Barney Miller? He was Miller's errand boy. Did the legwork, collections and that stuff. And he wasn't married? What kind of a dame would marry him? Well, there's always a dame, even for a guy like Busby. Still on the dame kick, huh? Yeah, sure, but there's no use talking with you about it, is there? No use, Mike. Wait till you meet Marie. You'll see the difference. There is no difference. Okay, okay. Now, what about the negative? I didn't get a chance to make it out. The dame came in too soon. Must be worth something to have her conk you. Yeah, it'll be worth something for me to catch up with her. I'm sure you will catch up with her. That you can bet on, Pat. Now, one thing I can't figure out. What's that? What Charlie Curtis meant when he said you were in trouble. Trouble? Me? I got everything I want. I like my new assignment. I got Marie. I ask you, Mike, what trouble could there be for me? <laughs>
You can't figure out the trouble either. Except for the normal kind of a change from different guys. Well, after Pat leaves, you change your clothes and go to that apartment on East 20th. You find out that Charlie Fergus rented it two weeks ago, but that's all you find out. When you call your phone service that afternoon, there's a message that Pat Chambers wants you to meet him at an address down in the village. Something about Barney Miller. If you press the door buzzer, you wonder what Pat had found out. I've been waiting for you, Hammond. Come on in. Only it isn't Pat Chambers at the door or any other cop. That's the first surprise. Mr. Miller doesn't like to be kept waiting. Come on. And that's the second surprise and the most shocking. What's this about, Miller? I understand words around that Pat Chambers wants to see me. Is that right? Why don't you find out from him? I also understand you're interested in me, too. Is that right? That's you're right about. Well, sit down. Why be uncomfortable? Pull up a chair for him, Trask. Glad to be a servant. Well, thanks for the hospitality, but I'm not staying, Trask. Never pass up friendly gestures, Hammer. Sit down. Some hospitality. My attitude towards my guests depends on them. Let's try out on a topic that interests me. Like what? Like the negative that Fergus had. Now, why should a lousy negative make you go through all this trouble? No trouble at all. At least not for me. Where is it now? I don't know. You believe this guy, Trent? Uh-uh, do you? Show him what we think of dishonest people. With pleasure. Hot... <laughs> Change your mind, Hammer? I don't find this type of conversation very pleasant. Weak stomach, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. Let's try another topic, like why Fergus want to get act as a contact between him and your pal Chambers. He died before I could find out. Too bad. Yeah, you're all broken up, aren't you? Too bad for you. Unless you decide to talk. I don't know what to talk about. All right, Trash, cut the poor guy out. Okay, anything you say, not say not. Oh. You feel like an insect pinned to an exhibit board under Miller's cold stairs. Your eyes blur with pain. But you're lucky enough to go out before Trask is finished working you over. When you come to, you're alone. Alone with the ache of hate inside that hurts even more than the searing bruises on your face. You get out of there and make a fast phone call to Pat Chambers. Sergeant Ryan tells you what restaurant Pat is having dinner at, and he also tells you that Pat is having it with his girlfriend, Marie. When you get to the eatery, you spot Pat and his dame. You didn't know what Marie looked like, but the dame sitting across the table from Pat is smiling at him with a smile that would sweeten a gallon of vinegar. It is the same doll who kissed you with a gun butt and took that negative. You back off before Pat can spot you, and you wait in your car till they come out. Then you tell him. Pat drops the dame off and then drives to his place. You wait a minute and then jab the doorbell. Come on in, Mike. Glad you dropped by. Have a drink? No, thanks. So what's the matter? A dame, that's the matter. And judging from the way your face looks, he's some slugger. What happened? A dame didn't do this. Then who? I'll get to it. How's your luck holding out with Barney Miller? I'm getting ready to sign, seal, and deliver him over to the commissioner. I figured out why Charlie Fergus came to me. You did? Yeah. Because he knew you and I were friends. Oh, you mean he wanted to use you as a go-between? Yeah, that's what I figured. Could be. Anything else you're thinking? Yeah, plenty. But I'll tell you about it when I'm positive, sure. I'll see you around. I'm sure you won't have that drink, Mike? Uh-uh. Well, I'll take care of yourself. Yeah, that goes for you, too. So long. Oh, uh, by the way. Yeah, Mike? I saw you having dinner in that restaurant tonight. So? Well, why didn't you join us? Well, I wanted to talk to you alone. Uh, you could have talked in front of Marie. I trust her with everything. You do? Yeah, and as long as you're here, you, you can be the first to know. We decided on it tonight. On what? To announce our engagement next Sunday. Oh. What do you mean, oh? Sound like happiness just came to your worst enemy. Now, you know I'm your friend, Pat. Why don't you behave that way? Pat, the worst thing a friend can do is stick his nose into his buddy's problems for the day. Problems? I have no problems with Marie. Mm. Where's she from, Pat? I've never seen her around before. Out west someplace. She's been in New York six months. Mm. What else do you know about her? I love her. That's all I want to know. Well, I'll be on my way. Wait a second. You started something. Finish it. You started something that might finish you. Meaning? Meaning that game. 
If you're trying to be funny, it's not coming off. Now, you're a smart cop. Don't you think you ought to find out something about her before you go off the deep end? I don't have to know. She's all right by me. I could tell you a few things. Nobody asked me. Had I know something about her. I don't want to know the kind of things you know. This thing's wrong for shut you. Up. She'll use you and throw you to the dog. I said shut up. You bullheaded cop. Can't you see this? Hot. Get out of here. About that drink. Get out. I didn't want it anyway. In just a moment, we'll return to That Hammer Guy. Now, the only, the only thing wrong about this apartment is you. And I'm here to set you right. But don't try to close the door on me. If you don't leave, I'll call the police. Yeah. Yeah, somebody like Pat Chambers. But you'd better call him fast before they rip the badge off his uniform. I don't know what you're talking about. Suppose I come in and explain. Very late. Yeah, for you. Oh, damn it, come in. Well, what have you got to explain? Suppose you start. Things aren't the way you think they are. Oh, you're not at all convincing, particularly without a gun in your hand. If you give me a day or two, you won't need any explanation. Well, the time you're going to get will be a lot longer than that. What are you going to do? Pat Chambers is still a cop with a sharp sense of duty. I wouldn't want to watch his face when he makes the arrest. What arrest? You. No. You can't do that. I can do a lot of things when it comes to black men. No, you can't do it. You don't understand. Why not? Please. You're touching me. It's too much to ask for a little more time. I can't afford it. I've been through too much. Look, I don't mind a dame holding a gun on me like you did last night, but when she turns out to be a cheap little blackmailer that's gone for a guy like Pat Chambers, it's too much. Not what you think it is. You might have convinced me before your friend Barney Miller had his boy use my face for a punching bag, but it took a right cross from Pat to knock some sense into me. He hit you? He's your friend. It's just a one-way street right now. I'm his friend. Well, I know you won't believe me, but I'm sorry. Yeah, you're going to be even sorrier unless you talk. It's about time I get repaid for my trouble. If I tell you now, it'll spoil everything. I don't care what it spoils. Why did you want that negative? Pat, nothing new. Why not? Promise not to tell him, please. I'm not making any bargains with you. You were desperate enough to kill to get that negative. Why? To help Pat? You got your names mixed up. You mean to help Barney Miller? To help him stop Pat Chambers from breaking his syndicate? You don't have to have a Phi Beta Kappa key to figure that one out. Miller was using you to get inside information, wasn't he? No, wasn't he? Well, I can't deny that. You bet you can't. But it didn't turn out that way at all. Now, if you'll only listen... I got funny ears. They'll only hear the it's truth. It's true that Barney Miller was using me to hurt Pat. 
He wants to stop the investigation, and he hired me to get friendly with Pat so he could set it up. Set what up? Pat's finish. That negative was a picture of Pat kissing me. He's going to release it to the papers. Pat said you were engaged. How could the story hurt him? I see you don't know as much about me as you think. Well, you can throw me in. What's the difference now? You know I'm from the West Coast, all right. And it won't take you long to find out I've spent half my life in jail out there. I'm the next convict. What? Oh, that was the plan. It's what Barney was paying me for. Oh. After that picture in your record was published, Pat couldn't be a cop in a Keystone Comet. Something went wrong. I'm... I fell in love with Pat. Sure. Really. I had to get that negative by any means possible to keep him from hurting you. Even if I believed you, a dead punk named Charlie Fergus would call you a liar from his grave. Try explaining that. He took the picture, and then he decided to double-cross Barney. Yeah, to sell a negative to the highest bidder. Barney's men were out hunting him down. But you got the negative first. I had to. So what's next? Nothing's next. Things will go on just like Pat and I planned. He's a cop. What do you think will happen to him when he finds out he married an ex-con? He never has to know. He'll find out someday. What then? Why don't you leave him alone? Forget about him. Do him the big favor, Just huh? let us alone and we'll make out all right. You've got no more chance than a snowball and an incinerator. Please don't interfere. No dice. I've never begged before. No dice. I've told you the truth. Don't you believe me? Doesn't make any difference what I believe. It's the way things are. Some things can be, some can't. All right, where's that negative? This is my one hope, my one chance. Where's the negative? That's the one man I really... You'll get over it. You know, I'll tell you something. I believe you do love him. Prove it to me now. The negative is in a public locker at the bus station. Okay, suppose we get it. What? Fun. Yeah. Suppose all three of us go down and get that negative. Miller takes you and the dame down to his car. He has her drive and he sits in the back seat with the nose of his revolver pressed cold against your neck. Lucky for me, Trask was watching the house. I would have hated missing you, Hammer. I could live without this conversation, Miller. Very funny. I bet you're wondering whether you can live with it. I hope Marie's driving doesn't make you uncomfortable. Bye. I hate women drivers, particularly the kind that use double crossroads. Maybe I'm being honest for the first time in my Just life. shut up and keep driving. Hey, you're going the wrong way. It's the only way. Turn it around, Marie. You're not going to get that. Turn it around or I'll let you have it. Go ahead, shoot. What trouble will you do now? Get your hands off that wheel. Let's go. I'm not getting that negative. You're driving me the car. I can be wrong. You wanted me to prove how much I cared for him. Well, I'm proving it now the best way I can. It's going to be rough on him. Would have been rougher the other way. You know I'm right. Yeah. What am I going to tell him? Just the part that will make him forget me. I won't forget him. No, I'm not worth remembering. A plane's ready now. Hurry. Pat, I've been looking all over for you, Marie. What happened? Where are you going? Well, I'm going none of your business. Oh, what's wrong? Marie. Get your hands off me. What's wrong? You're going to tell me. Your friend here will tell you. Mike? He'll tell you and he'll show you the negative. Now get your hands off. I hate it when a cop puts his hands on me. I hate it every second when you touch me. Marie. I wouldn't want to miss that play. So long, cop. Marie. Pat. Get out of my way. i got to find out. I'll tell you, Pat. I'll tell you everything you should know. go outside with Pat. And as Marie's plane melts into the sky, you tell him only what he should know. Only what Marie wanted him to know. It takes him an agonizingly long time before he can say anything. And when he does, 
the sickness inside you makes you choke. I should have listened to you right at the start, Mike. You've always known about things. You've always known about things. Yeah, sure. What you found out you don't know about things would fill a book. This is Network Replay.